Jim Groom, what happened? <laughs> Why did you leave us? <laughs> I really don't know what happened. You don't know. What happened. Do you remember <laughs> anything? <laughs> yeah, the last two weeks has been a big blackout. <laughs> <laughs> I so know that I was in a different time zone. Yeah. I know that I wasn't here, but I can't oh, we know that too, too much more. <laughs> yeah, we, did, we didn't even bother to, to light the eternal flame for you <laughs> with all these episodes we've done before now no you didn't like before it was like always oh, like jim groom come back mm -hmm. this time it was basically like it know? felt it felt more like a, a clean break like we could move on but now you're back and all of these old feelings are just surging up in my bathing suit area again <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's interesting <laughs> We call that the funky cold Medina, okay. where I'm from. <laughs> um, but so, yeah. welcome to DTLT today. Uh, thank you. It's good to be back on the show. <laughs> I was welcoming our viewers. It's but good for them, I'm too, sure too. It, it is probably good for them that you're back. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. But I'm not sure of that. You're I'm not, not sure. certain. <laughs> lots of lots of capital letters. Lots of love for you on the chat. Lots of love. Yeah, big fan, Julia. Noise professor. Although they're doing it for each other. <laughs> well, not... there's a groom. There's a groom at the oh, bottom. Okay, good. Thank yeah. you, Julia. Yeah, I was wondering. A groom. Groom. So tell us about your trip. They're not booing. They're saying groom. Groom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that means, you know, we haven't gotten full steam yet. Yeah, so my trip, I don't even remember when it started. August, October 21st, August, October 21st around? It seems like August. Uh, oh. October 24th, I left mm. that Monday. Really? Yeah, and I went to Salt Lake City. I met up with Chris Lott. I was actually working on my presentation in the um, airport, waiting for Brian Lamb to come in later, and Mikhail and Grant and all them. But then Chris was there, so he's like, hey, I'm going to meet Jared in downtown Salt Lake City. Jump in. Jared so, Stein. Jared Stein. So okay. we just went and cruised around Salt Lake City. We hung out at a bookstore. We talked. You know, he was awesome to talk about the MOOC because he's been following the changed very closely he's been following ds106 very closely okay. Okay. and he's been talking about it and he's actually doing some research on um moocs because he's in a very interesting situation i think you guys would find this interesting he's taking classes in a master's program uh for instructional technology that he designed uh, sound familiar yeah. yeah it does that's what we're doing so he's doing the same thing to get his own degree of classes that he's teaching mm -hmm. it's just bizarre <laughs> wow so, you know, yeah. we can relate to that. But anyway, he's actually focusing and doing research on the MOOC. Okay. And he talked extensively about the MOOC, and he said what he thought was different about DS-106 is people actually made things, mm -hmm. and that distinguished <laughs> everything. Um, and then we cruised up to Park City, and Park City Hotel was like three different hotels, and it was kind of like the Overlook. Ooh. Like the mountains were there, yeah. and the snow was just starting. And, mm, you know, sounds there awful. were all sorts of different, like, like, hallways and it was kind of empty is there any big wheels big wheels Run twins around. yeah okay <laughs> axes exactly <laughs> i found myself locked in a big food <laughs> dry big storage ice chest sure yeah very interesting <laughs> but yeah park city was interesting i mean the open ed conference was kind of colonized by like i went to a couple like after conference parties mm -hmm. and there were a lot of like you know you know entrepreneurs, startups giving me all these cards about this and that, but I got so bombed the day after <laughs> my presentation that I was useless. Like, people were avoiding me <laughs> because I did some. That was when we had this kind of dark cast. I guess it was on the radio, but it has come to be known as... Can't say it. Can't right say it. Right for the bleep. The yeah. bleep for the cast. Um, and that was pretty crazy. Uh, but the open end, the presentation, the keynote, people seemed to like it. We had a great time. Funnest poster session I ever yeah, had was DS106 radio poster session. We okay. Brian Lamb and Chris Lott went out with their oh, cells and this. they had interviewed. It's like a remote broadcast yeah, it was PBX. Really? Yeah. And PBX really came to, and it was a lot of fun. Um, Brian's presentation on sustainability was fascinating because 
I mean, it was such a term that people were throwing around, and he actually was trying to nail down what exactly it means for ed tech. And for me, it was interesting because it's being used again and again, but no one's really thinking about what it means. And so his presentation was really trying to think it through um, with examples from Zach. And um, it was just interesting. It was an interesting conference. And I think what happened is you felt like there was some sort of spirit like open ed went back to 2009 when it started mm -hmm. as for me with the kind of move in different directions than just like OER mm -hmm. and I felt like you know maybe in 2012 it's going back to Vancouver you know David while I was really excited about the energy that happened the day me and the Gates Foundation guy kind of did head to head yeah and so it kind of was fun you know so I loved it I mean I didn't know how the presentation would go but Gardner Campbell listening to him on the radio the night before with Alan mm -hmm. talking about um, radio and um, vinyl and all that really got me excited and then and he's the talked about experiences open versus experience. resources yeah just nailed it for me and I was like okay it's perfect and so that's where it went so how was Gardner the, how, how was the uh, the Gates Foundation talk before yours um, I thought it was scattered and you know I don't I think he kind of made points that people could kind of come to on but like you know it seemed like the corporations and the flat word knowledge guy who was a total salesman did the same thing they went back to, and then there's poor Becky, who has a kid, and who's single, and who's trying to go to school, but no one will pay for her tuition. And I know Becky exists, but it was just this kind of like, you know, real way to suck you in and say like, you know, there's starving children in China, right. eat your food or give <laughs> yeah. me money. It's like, you know what, that, it didn't touch anything. Yeah, it's like, like he's if, going out and helping if you Becky. Can't, if you can't make DS-106 scale, then poor <laughs> Becky's children aren't going to be able to eat. Well, that reminds totally. me of those artificial scenarios that the badges did. It's like, here's these people who, you know, need to, they've got this great mm -hmm. education, but they can't prove it. So, right. you know, <laughs> Becky, who's an inner city dweller, you exactly. know, needs to... You know, because we don't have the internet where you can frame a personality <laughs> and contact right. people and yeah. make something. I mean, yeah, or you, I you couldn't put what you do online and show... Yeah. That you can produce something. And either, Becky's either, genius can yeah. come to the fore. Either right. be, either Becky can't get the knowledge, or she can't get a badge to show that she got it. <laughs> she can't get a break either way. Yeah, Becky needs to go to University of Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. clearly. So I mean, I was really kind of disgruntled a little bit. I mean, yeah. his talk was interesting, and I was all ready to be like, you know, I, you know what I did. I sent this guy an email because he said he wanted to talk to me. Yeah, of course. So I sent him an email. This is kind of funny. I don't think I've talked about this publicly. I should actually get the email up. And I basically said, look, I am all for the Gates Foundation. And I'm all for the Gates Foundation funding us like a million dollars to get a bus and go around the country on tour. DS106 on tour. That's right. <laughs> like we'll play bands and we'll talk about DS106. We're not going to give anything back to you. We no, just want a there bus. There is no metric. <laughs> we want a bus and we want money to travel That's from right. city to city and so hopefully right. internationally. So I didn't see you pull that million dollar check out today. And like, he was not interested. He wrote me back and he said, you know, end of the. That's kind of not what the Gates Foundation does. We'll have a little logo. That's the Gates Foundation but on the bus. I thought it was fun. Like the idea of like you really want to talk to me. Here's what I would like. And, you know, I probably should have approached it more professionally because this was my chance to really, like, <laughs> sell out and, like, get money maybe from huh. someone. But yeah, they you really are reaching, weren't interested. You are reaching that threshold. The million dollars is about the area where you would go to the other I side. I would. But I figured if you're going to go, and DS-106 was written on the backs of so many people, uh -huh. that if we were going to do it, we would all have to enjoy the party. And it sure. would be a pool. We'd get a bus, and anyone who's available, hopefully get everyone <laughs> vacation time and, like, Get someone to hire behind. I would think with the million dollars, a couple people could become available. For yes, sure. I think <laughs> you, so. would, you would hope so, anyway. I mean, I think we get the core people in, right? Right, and pay them, or at least make sure that we the bus stopped where they live for like three weeks, <laughs> right? Like we could go to Zach Dowell's for like three weeks and hang yeah. out in the shed. Oh, He'd probably be done with us after three That's hours, right. but so that was my big attempt. It didn't work. Like you say, you may need to, you know, to put some effort into it next time. Yes, right. I may not have to be hangover after the day yeah. after and, like, just yeah, basically. You didn't, you didn't bring your A game for that. I did not. But you know what? I have no interest in dealing with people who, especially when Gates recently said yesterday, what did he say, that the problem with uh, education is that teachers don't know anything about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this yeah. is that the war on teachers right now that is yeah. happening a la the Gates Foundation. Yep. And I cannot stand behind that, you know. Yeah. At all. So that was Salt Lake City. Okay. Mm -hmm. You guys ready for Portland? I'm ready, I'm ready for, Portland. for Portland. Yeah, am I dominating this show too much? I'm no. Gonna... 
No, this, this is what a, this is the welcome back gym show. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. So Friday morning, I'm in Salt Lake City. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday morning, first thing in the morning, me, Grant Potter, and uh, Chris Lott, who was awesome, took us back to the airport at Salt Lake, and I went to meet my friend Zach in Portland. Zach, I've known since Brooklyn. Our kids were born about the same time in Brooklyn. Then when I came to Virginia, he went to Portland. I tried to go to Portland and apply for a job at Reed, like my second year here, mm -hmm. but they weren't having it. Me and the guy, like, basically Marty Ringle, who's the CIO there, who I actually saw on this trip, was basically like, you know, I'm not sure. I was like, you know, to be honest, da 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 da. -da. He's like, you haven't been honest so far in this. And I was like, what? No. <laughs> anyway, all sorts of confusion. But anyway, I got a reason I went back to Portland is the Northwest Academic Computing Consortium which is an awesome group. And so I went and party with Zach and we hung out and I love the city of Portland. I could talk about that extensively. I would definitely move to Portland. Um, but in, in between all of like the work that you've been doing, you, you found some time here and there to party is what you mean. Yes, yeah. I did find a little bit of time sure, between yeah. emails of you like, what do I fucking do, right? Like, <laughs> you know, you're like crybaby cast. Yes. <laughs> I'm all alone. Can you help me? I do. Um, but between that, yeah, and all your DTLT sessions I had to watch today, I did find time to do a little, you know, personal time. Oh, good. Is that all right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> when I was gone, did you do anything personal? Hey, or you're, was it? You're, you're the director. It's was, all right. <laughs> was it purely work for you <laughs> while I was gone? Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I had fun. We did a lot of cool stuff. I could talk about Portland extensively. But when I got to the Northwest Academic Computing Co uh, Consortium, these people, it was like 45 people. They were from like University of Oregon, Oregon State, a groovy little school that I want to go check out called Evergreen State College. Yeah, I've heard, it, heard of that. These people were awesome. Mm -hmm. They're doing all the stuff we're doing. They have their own studio, uh, radio. They have WordPress. Yep. They they are rocking there. Mm -hmm. And a couple of people, particularly um, this woman, Amy Green, she's doing amazing stuff. Major fan. Uh, so she they were there. People from Washington State, Southern Oregon, Portland State University, Portland University, all over the map. And mm -hmm. they were awesome people. There was 45 of them. The consortium pays for them all to come, puts them up, and puts them in a room to talk about issues. So I presented about DS106 and all that stuff. The rest of this, this presentation were us all sitting around talking about what is digital literacy. And someone mm -hmm. just facilitated it. What is faculty development? And they were all instructional technologists pretty much. Mm -hmm. So it was really cool, cool to be with a group of people and there was no set agenda. It was just come and talk about issues. And there was like predefined issues. There was a whole session on WordPress. And mm -hmm. I talked basically about some of the stuff we're doing, but everybody talked about what they're doing. And I was like, wow. Yeah. That's, in a way, I've never been to Educom, but that's my hope. I, I think Martha and I are going to get up there this year. Uh, and that's sort of what I understand Educom to be, in a way, is that it's more discussions than sessions. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that <clears throat> model of it. Like, you know, why do we need to, to take this crappy idea of the lecture class and turn it into a conference <laughs> where everybody's lecturing you on how they do things as opposed yeah. to turning it into a discussion? And it really did work. And uh -huh. everybody was engaged. Everyone was really cool. I mean, we talked about, like, it was almost like a gardener, um, you know, when we used to have those staff meetings. It's yeah. like everything would get turned up. Yep. And everyone would have ideas and everyone would be playing on each other. It was a really good vibe. Which makes me think the people in the Northwest also are groovy. Mm -hmm. So they got that going. Sure. Um, and then finally, Friday, which was the day after the conference, that Friday I got to spend um, the morning at the conference and then I had the afternoon off and then I left Saturday. But that morning they wanted to all get together and figure out how to build their own DS-106 model site for the, the consortium called NWACO. Okay. <laughs> and they were going to basically, awesome. starting January, they're going to run their own group. Okay. And it's going to run parallel to DS-106, and they're going to deal with it, with, like, tweak it to what they want, but they're going to stream it into DS-106. Nice. So they built mm. a core site that they're managing, and they were just amazing. Yeah. A great group of people, and uh, the best group I've ever gone and talked to and then been a part of. I really was blown away. So, NWAC, you're great. That was a great time. Um, hey, Akimoto, who invited me, and I think Amy Green was actually behind me coming there, but um, gave me these, which is kind of, she said, a traditional Hawaiian kind of 
salute to anyone who comes, you give them gifts. So th given that you don't hold too much of a grudge against me, I want to give you a Mahuna Lao. Mauna Loa. Thank you. <laughs> what, how do I say it? Mauna Loa. Here's Mauna a Mauna Loa. Loa for you. Is this safe? Or Mauna Loa. And then yeah. here's a this some special Mauna Loa. Macad I got more. Macadamia nuts. I got okay. some for all of you, too, out there listening in uh, DS-106 or PTOP. <laughs> yeah, throw it at them. There we go. You but, go. Yeah, they gave me, <laughs> they gave me all sorts of um, presents. It was a really, it was just a cool place to go and present and hang out. Mm. So I, I had a great time in Portland. Um, that afternoon, this is the first time I've done this in ages, I was done, I had nothing else to do. Yeah. I went and I had great Mexican, Tex-Mex, then I went and I saw Contagion by oh, Steve right. Soderbergh. Yeah, and you said you kind of liked it? I kind it? of liked it. Okay. I didn't think it was brilliant, but I thought it was kind of, you know who I really liked? Him? Matt Damon. Yeah. Mm. He was good. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, Soderbergh, I can take a leave, but... Um, it was just great to walk around a city, go see a movie, yeah. hang out, and then I went to bed that night for 13 hours, and then got on the plane. And then I did the uh, DS-106 the airborne, airborne crash. Yeah. The, my, <laughs> the Mile High Broadcast. The Mile High mile. Broadcast, <laughs> which seemed to catch people's imagination on the yeah. internet, which was interesting. <laughs> I mean, Julia's uh, mashup was awesome, because I had just seen that video right. of that woman with the high cheekbones talking and very, like, a... <laughs> seductively telling you, put on your seatbelt. Um, and then she mixes that up with that, which is brilliant. So so that was my two weeks. I mean, a lot of it was kind of working from Cast Iron Coding, which Cast Iron Coding is the organization run by my friend Zach Davis, who hosted me. And they're the ones who host UMW Blogs. Right. So it was great to be able to sit down with them and hang out with all them. But also, I worked from them. When I was emailing you guys during the week, I was just every day at their office, mm -hmm. just working. So it was cool to be able to work remotely from there and do that stuff. And I don't feel that far behind right now. I was going to say, what, what did you get done while you were there? Um, <laughs> so what, put like, him on the spot, eh? What, like, <laughs> yeah. tangible evidence of, of you actually working in Portland can, would we be able to see? Um, did you I, blog? Oh, no. No? I didn't I, see any blog posts. No. You, you tweeted every once in a while. I did. I, I mean, that's to happen to me. I mean, I don't know how other people are. You just don't blog at all, so you can't really... <laughs> you can't relate. <laughs> so, I think I blogged more than you did while you were well, gone. <laughs> maybe. But... um that's sad state of affairs. <laughs> the fact is, is that I... When I'm into something, huh. when I'm locked in, if it's not, like, directly relevant to blogging, although I have a big blog brewing about Portland, um, I can't... <laughs> Do it. I have to be either involved in one thing or See, not. See, Julia knows. Julia can answer the question about what I blogged about. Andy blogged about Salvador Dali, yes, but that's Salvador Dali that he got from my tweet. Oh, wow. You're, so you're taking credit for my blogs now. Okay. Well, you saw an Ubu Web <clears throat> link from me, followed it, and you found this like long lost Salvador Dali, which I read too, Julia, this long lost <laughs> Salvador Dali <laughs> clip with him doing this trick. Mm -hmm. And you said, you know, if it wasn't for Jim Groom, I wouldn't have blogged. <laughs> then, well, but you know that what? was my little homage to you know that was my that was I'm missing you, Jim. That was come, the big toe. Jim, come home. Jim, That's right, big, big toe. Big toe, which come I home. I love Sergeant Holka. <laughs> well, and you know, you're you're the director now, so you don't really even have to answer to Andy about these. No, but things. I have to answer like Steve Greenlaw, yeah. who's like, "You've been gone so long." <laughs> like everybody, like really, when I'm around, no one cares. Yeah. That's right. No, noise professor says you are the man now. You are the man, yeah. bringing us down. That's right. Noise professor, Occup step into my office. Occupy DTLT. And you we know, are, one of the we're first the ninety nine percent. One of the first things <laughs> that the man does is takes credit for their employees, like what they do. So. I wish I could do that in your so case. You, you take it <laughs> All right. <laughs> Why do you work on doing something? <laughs> <laughs> something we're taking credit. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Is right. I am the veteran here, by the way. <laughs> well, Jim, it's good to have you back. Well, it's good to be back. Yep. You know? What Tim said. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about this? I got a, I got a, I got a, a question, suggestion. Why don't we take DTLT and we'll move it out to Portland, mm -hmm. but we'll still support the faculty at Mary Washington. You got to be interested in Portland. You, not so much with the weather, the rain. Yeah, that, I would need a little bit more sunshine than apparently they have out there. It's not cold, though. I understand. 
and the rain, look, you're not going to get a metropolis like Portland in the south. Atlanta, uh. That's true. Maybe New Orleans, but that thing's on the water. Portland was always on my list of places to, to go and maybe see about living, but I, I just hear. I feel like we need to be out in California. No. no. California, look. California can't balance its budget. They're like <laughs> laying off everybody. How's ask, Oregon's? Ask, yeah. How's Oregon's budget? Much doing? better. Well, much better. Oh, well, okay. That settles it. Ask, ask, Absolutely. you know, um, Washington, though, is getting killed like California. Right. Oregon somehow is a bit of a bubble. Mm. Um, and I, they might have it bad. I mean, it seems like the West is getting what we got like a year ago. It always happens. Mm. The economy takes a little bit longer to hit West. Um, but a, California's a particular. Thing. Yeah, it's a time zone thing. Just, it <clears throat> moves slower with yeah. economy. That's something the economy should cover. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, is California, I mean, they're shot. I mean, they're still right. recovering from Enron, I think. I think this is all a result yeah. of... Just how much Enron drain their ass. Right. Becky, that mother that can't take the California. She's in California. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> she is. But well, I'm telling you, I'm, I got newfound respect for the PST. You know? Yeah. We're okay. still on the East. We're, on, we're still. Well, actually, we're in. Well, that's a DS 106 yeah, radio. Yeah, we are in That's now. a DS 106 well, radio reference. You might not get that. <laughs> no, I, I was no, talking I it. it to him. Sorry, right, we'll, we'll, con- we'll continue to hold down the EST until yeah. you, you actually come back to us, because clearly you left a little piece of your heart oh, you in the PST. you get on the radio? I do. Oh. I play my music. I thought you just did your little TV now. I play my music on my <laughs> iPhone. Yeah, on your iPhone, but not on the radio. That's not I the do. radio. Just because you're playing music on your iPhone doesn't mean you're on the radio. You actually have to connect to the radio and broadcast. Yeah, I do that. Oh, you do? Yes. You just don't, what, Lady broadcast it? <laughs> because I haven't heard you on the radio, no. and I've been watching the tweets. But There's no <laughs> live from. I, I subscribe to your blog, sir. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, like That's like Andy's question about evidence. I do. Like, do you have any evidence? You can ask Julia. That you've been tweeting that Julia will completely back me up on this. I broadcast from my teetotaler in-law's house. That's right. <laughs> what are you talking Which about? Which is awesome. What up you- in the attic. I do. I talk about how I'm drinking in my bedroom. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. I hope you really get out soon <laughs> to your own little you know, it's apartment. Not inter- it's, it's not I interesting I know you're like, all. how old are you? It's just yeah. sad. How old do you uh, that? I don't... 29. 29. And you're living where? With, with my wife's parents. <laughs> and that's why you're so into this TV. Because yeah. that's all you have. <laughs> that's all I got left. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Good luck with that. Thanks. I really do hope you get out. At Thank least, you. <laughs> you know. Appreciate it, boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With the boys like this, I don't really have to good worry talk. about being one up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and on that note. Yeah, no, I think we should. Not yet. Oh, we got a little bit more? <laughs> you got yeah. more? So, the other thing so is. So much this. for that old 15 minute thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving again tomorrow. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I won't be back till Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Why would you want to take a job anywhere else? I don't know. Yeah, you might as well just retire here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I can see it now. In laws for life. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's it. Yeah. The DLT. That is it. <laughs> we'll <let you> go. <laughs> that's that's all there is to us, it. Folks. <laughs> Peace. Thank you.